Good day and welcome to this week's midweek message, which is called Standing at the Crossroads. Well, wasn't last week a fascinating week with the global shutdown of Facebook? Uh, the New York Times had this to say about the global outage. Today's outage brought our reliance on Facebook and its properties like WhatsApp and Instagram into sharp relief, said Brooke Aaron Duffy, a professor of communications at Cornell University. The abruptness of today's outage highlights the staggering level of precarity that structures our increasingly digitally mediated work economy. I wonder if you were influenced by the blackout. Well, we all know the value of seeking information and the helps that we get of online media, etc., etc. But as you've seen with the outage of Facebook, um, online stuff can let us down. And I think there's a difference between the information we receive and it's sometimes actually wisdom that we are needing. Uh, particularly when we stand at the crossroads, they need to make important decisions. So way back in Jeremiah's day, Israel was themselves in a precarious position. They were at a spiritual low, psychological, politi political low. Things were not going well at all. And Jeremiah was a prophet, and he was an unpopular prophet, sometimes called the weeping prophet, because very few people listened to him. He had this to say in Jeremiah 6, verse 16. This is what the Lord says, Stand at the crossroads, and look, ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. So, the text clearly says we've got to do three things. We've got to look, we've got to ask, and we've got to walk. And look requires effort, doesn't it? It requires strong eyes, it requires strong effort. It might require, if we're going to really find wisdom, it might require a lot more than a quick Google search. And looking for the newest and the latest way may not be the best way. Uh, the good thing to know that for Israel and Judah, sorry, Judah way back then, and for us today, there were other options, but they just hadn't discerned them yet. They hadn't had, their spiritual eyes were not alert and focused on what God wanted them to see and know and understand. It's a little bit like Sherry and I were at the, a coffee shop the other day, and we were doing the target word puzzle from the newspaper. And we discovered that we were quite out of practice. You know, it's a little nine-word puzzle put in a little block kind of thingy. And you're supposed to get a certain amount of words, the target, and I think it was 15 or 17 words. And we only managed about half of that. Um, and it's just that we were out of practice, and it takes a while. The words are there, but we hadn't discerned them yet. And then the next day, Shirley actually phoned me. She was, she'd found a different newspaper, and th the main nine-letter word just sprung out at her. She was already finding practice. The word was xylophone. I mean, what a big word. So... Sometimes our, our pathway is there, but we just haven't discerned it yet. And we have to look, and it takes practice. We have to ask. Well, that means we've got to a crossroad and we're unsure. And the idea, the word picture from Jeremiah is that there's a traveler that we meet, somebody who is more experienced, has more wisdom, um, and who knows the pathway, who's walked it already, and, and offers us that wisdom. But we have to ask. But who will we ask? Well, back in Jeremiah's day, there were the false prophets, and they wouldn't have been good people to ask at all. They were saying that all is well in Judah. They were prophesying and foretelling a false peace. And they said, even in the future, if you do go into exile, it'll be a short little exile, so don't even worry about that. It'll be a year or two. So it was false, it was untrue. The kind of people we should ask, be asking is those who have fruitful, faithful lives. Those who put their walk of faith into practice and there is a sense of faithfulness and fruitfulness. They have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, endurance, gentleness, self-control. These are the kind of people and these are the sort of people that are abiding in Christ. They not, may not be on the front page of social media. We might have to seek them out. They might be older, they might be younger, but they have wisdom of the years in their lives and fruitfulness. We are to ask these kind of 
people. Back in the Thessalonian church, which we've been learning about on Sunday, there was the, the speculative predictors and those who were protecting themselves from um, you know, society because of what they believed in the second coming. They had withdrawn. Well, both of those had unproductive lives. So we shouldn't be asking them, the speculative predictors or the protective withdrawers. The people we should be asking will be full of grace and truth. They will be unafraid to tell us the truth, but they will do it in a graceful way. And then lastly, we are to walk in this way. Well, why is walking in this way so difficult? Well, for Israel, it required them being honest about who they were and their relationship with God. They had compromised. They were complacent. So um, there's another way, and that is another reason. It's because many despise the old paths, especially today in our digital world, in our way of the new and the latest thing. And perhaps these old paths, these ancient paths seem out of, uh, they seem old-fashioned. They seem very uncool. Um, yet there is wisdom, life-saving wisdom in these ancient proven paths. Someone called uh, Feinberg, a theologian, he says, the ancient paths and the good way are the same. They are the ways of repentance, reconciliation, fear of God, and love of God. They are the ways of the Mosaic tradition. They are these proven ways. And they are the ways of hard work, friends, the ways of um, asking, of looking, and walking faithfully. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your grace and your truth that we find in these ancient paths. Thank you that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Help us, Lord, to be courageous and seek the ways of repentance, the ways of reconciliation, the ways of fearing you, and the ways of loving you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, friends, and have a good day.